Hey friends, welcome to today's video. This is the August Fragrance Awards. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, does it feel like summer just completely flew by? I cannot believe that it's back to school time, fall time, all of those things. I am ready for fall though. I think you know that from my other videos. I'm not ready for the feeling of summer to end, but yes, I'm ready for this heat and humidity to go away, and we probably have another month of it here in Virginia. So the Fragrance Awards is completely fictitious. I made it up, and I have categories that I put my fragrances from the past month into to give you a sense of how they worked out for me, whether I like them or not, what I think of them, all of that. I do have some awesome videos lined up for this fall. Would love to hear if you have any special requests. Some of the upcoming ones are going to be a chocolate and caramel and maybe honey I have to see if do I have enough honey fragrances to feature that but maybe all three of those in a video I have a patchouli centered video I have a cozy sweater video coming up and I have a fall warm and spicy video planned as well as additional blind buy chronicles as my ongoing buying and trying process continues and I have more rapid sample reviews so is the fragrance blind buy worthy all of that is coming up I don't know how I'm gonna squeeze it all into the fall but we'll figure that out and by the way I do have part two maybe even a part three of my fragrance arranging video coming I have made some progress on my shelves started off with a vanilla shelf and then quit because I got overwhelmed but I do have a few more shelves completed that I'd love to show you in a part two maybe I'll finish it all or maybe there'll be a part three let's get into the fragrance awards First category is the best blind buy not necessarily blind purchased in that month but it is a blind buy and for me that is Accendus Luna Dulcius which I saw hyped up on Instagram and got really curious about other reviewers have said that this is a coconut fragrance I yes there's coconut in here but what I get from this is mostly a vanilla powdery musky beauty of a fragrance this is a gorgeous fragrance don't get it wrong but I, I don't get a whole lot of coconut out of it or I, I wouldn't classify it as a summer coconut fragrance I think this is a little bit more mature pretty kind of a fragrance has some floral notes but really some sweetness vanilla tonka bean and musk and some powder and uh, elegant I think this is a really elegant fragrance although this could also go in the worst bottle category which is coming up in a bit because I absolutely dislike <laughs> hate this bottle design I, I don't know what's going on here I mean I could have done with the, the bottom parts fine if we just had a plain atomizer at the top I'm not sure what's happening here it's like I'm, am I supposed to attach a carabiner to this I, I don't know what's happening here is this a cigarette lighter impression someone help me but the fragrance inside yes favorite blind buy and the best bottle category goes to bond number nine New York Nights I really do like the metallic finish I like the way that the New York skyline is portrayed there and this fragrance is beautiful I talked about this in my coffee fragrances video and you will probably see it again in the chocolate and caramel and honey and whatever other kinds of fall notes I put in their video because one of the main accords in this is a caramel accord this is also sweet it's also a coffee fragrance there's some sandalwood in here some touches of floral really beautiful fragrance great for date night great for daytime hanging out in your cozy sweater kind of fragrance really really nice creamy fragrance with beautiful gourmand notes in it but the bottle I mean I'm just a fan of the bond number nine bottles are you sick of hearing of it yet don't answer that question <laughs> but yeah really beautiful so then you get to the worst bottle and I probably don't even need to say this again because I have said it ad nauseum it's my do a bottle <laughs> bottles I wore a few in August including aphrodisiac cafe which is featured in the coffee fragrance video this is a combination of Inicio psychedelic love with Montel's intense cafe I do love the fragrance but all of these bottles just drive me crazy and I don't like these stickers but yet I'm obsessed with looking at duas and getting them and there's a bunch of these that I really enjoy so I won't go on and on you've heard this already but there's no denying that this was my worst bottle and maybe also the Luna Dulcius Let's talk about the sexiest fragrance of the month and it's hands down Armani Code Cashmere. This is a fragrance that I've enjoyed for years at this point. If you like a grown up 
hug in a bottle with a lot of sultriness surrounding it this is one that you may want to try out it has a heavy nutty accord through an almond note that is present throughout the life of the fragrance there is jasmine sambach there's heliotrope which lends some powderiness to this there's a little hint of suede in the base but mostly this just feels it reminds me a little bit of like girl of now with some jasmine touches to it the jasmine isn't strong in here the jasmine is very soft and subtle it's not a star player the star player to me is the almond accord the hint of powderiness and it's a hint it's like just nope, just a little bit but um very beautiful for your cashmere sweater kinds of nights so love this this is just absolutely beautiful husband loves this on me in the category of best everyday fragrance, I have two. So I went to Disney World and Universal this summer just a few weeks ago. It was super hot and I tried out again. I tried it out last time we went as well, but it's Burberry Brit Sheer. I have a travel spray of this. This is not one that I would purchase a full bottle of myself, but if you're someone that likes a just a fresh, fruity kind of a fragrance that smells a little bit like hairspray or hair products, this might be one that you'd want to check out if you're in healthcare if you work in an office setting like cubicles and you're close to other people, if you're in retail or any kind of environment where you're around a lot of other people and you don't want your fragrance to project far and it doesn't have to last very long because this one doesn't, it is pleasant. I won't be getting a full bottle, but maybe you'd be interested in a fragrance like this. It was great when I wore it to the parks. Perfect for like a super hot summer day. And then the second fragrance is one that I joked about in a reel on Instagram. Just a little bit of a joke because I didn't really mean it. And the reel was something like when you are scent of the day does nothing wrong but you cheat on it with the fragrance that just arrived in the mail so the fragrance that had just arrived was cafe cabanel which i mean i sampled and was wonderful but then i sprayed it on and just fell like really really in love with it i was joking because the scent of the day is also quite beautiful and this is bubble bath from Maison margella one that i think is a little bit slept on i've heard about it here and there on various channels but i don't know that people are talking about it much anymore and it certainly deserves some attention this fragrance is soapy it has a very elegant soapy smell to it like the name implies bubble bath and it does have this gorgeous coconut accord that is unexpected when you think about what a bubble bath smells like you don't think of coconut typically but there's a coconut thing that's really soft and sweet and subtle in here and if I didn't know any better I would think that this has something along the lines of a quince note in it which is a fruity smell it's almost like a fresher version of a black currant smell like if black currant is the deep dark berry smell then quince it's, I don't think quince is a berry, but it is a fruit. It is like a lighter version of that. Something like that comes through in here for me. So soapy, coconutty, a little fruity, really enjoyable. Now I have to douse myself in this. I probably spray this head to toe, I don't know, 20 times or something insane on skin and clothing for it to have lasting power, but then it does. Like I get a good six-ish hours out of this with that overspraying and one that's definitely worth reapplying absolute gem of a fragrance love for me then a fragrance in the best gifts category which is one that should be a fragrance that would be the most universally likable of the bunch that i wore in august and i do think this fits that it's donna from trusardi i can't help but think that this is what i wanted coco mademoiselle to really smell like are they in the same family maybe there's a prominent yuzu note at the top with some lemon that gives the opening of this fragrance a really delightful brightness, but it's anchored by these gorgeous, juicy, I know juicy isn't a word that you use with florals, but juicy white florals. A little vanilla sandalwood in the base, a little patchouli, a slight hint of woodiness. This is just an elegant, sophisticated fragrance without being heavily grown up, heavily cloying. Like it is grown up, but not incredibly mature. I, this also a special occasion fragrance, but I think this is a very heavily likable fragrance. It's almost for me like a toned down Coco Mademoiselle without whatever notes are in Coco Mademoiselle that just give me a bit of a headache. Yes, I know it's a beloved fragrance and I love to smell it on others, but I right now at this point in my life cannot wear Coco Mademoiselle. Don't judge if I show up here in the fall with a bottle of Coco Mademoiselle as a, a recent purchase that can happen. In the category of best special occasions, certainly True Sardi and others that I mentioned can fit that bill, including Luna Dulcius and some that are coming up. But I am going with Coco Noir. Yes, 
this is Coco Noir Eau de Parfum, and I wore it in the summer. That happened, okay? <laughs> this is a woody and spicy fragrance. I do pick up a lot of spices in this, especially cloves. Does clove count as a spice? It does to me. This is clovey and a little bit of patchouli, not super heavy on the patchouli, but definitely a little bit resinous, some woodiness and spiciness. I just think this is an alluring fragrance. It's not overly heavy, even though it is an eau de parfum concentration. And if you spray too much, it could be a little bit too much, period, like overwhelming. More so an evening fragrance than any other time of day, although I work from home, so I wear it during the day. And I really love the bottle. I like a good black bottle that's simple, so definitely special occasion. In the category of biggest surprise, I don't have a full bottle of this yet. I did, and then I sold it. And then I purchased a travel spray. <laughs> I sold it because I got sick of it. And then I purchased a travel spray and then went back and forth with the travel spray. Loved it, didn't like it, loved it again. So recently I took Un Jardin Sous Le Nil on vacation, on that same Orlando vacation in Florida where it's hot and humid. I did the same thing last year, a dedicated video just to this fragrance. It's supposed to have a mango note, and it does. So it's like a green mango note, not the juicy, you know, where your mouth waters because it's so sweet and overflowing mango note, not that. It's like a green mango that was just picked fresh off the tree, and it's the way the skin of the mango smells. How do I know this? Because I've been to my family's property in Puerto Rico where there are mango trees, and they're constantly picking them off as they are ready to be picked. So this is a fragrance that is citrusy. It is fresh. It has a little bit of like a hint of kick and spice to it. So so I think I like it again and that's what the surprise is that I've gone back and forth with this fragrance and really enjoyed it this year whereas last year I was kind of indifferent about it I think if I remember that review correctly and so I'm back to maybe I want a full bottle of this again so it's on the wish list to consider as we head into spring of 2023. Then in the category of a fragrance that is not a safe blind buy and it's one that I have this low-key obsession with probably because I want to love it and I think that I do but I can't wear it I put it on and then I get overwhelmed with it like I love it at first and then get overwhelmed it is Tom Ford's Oud Mineral I have a oil perfumery impression of it although I did have a decant of the original and they smell identical yeah this fragrance well maybe not identical maybe like right right there but this fragrance is hard to describe it is incredibly salty it's supposed to be a woody aquatic so the main accord is marine and then you get this saltiness there's like this woodiness to it as well it absolutely leans masculine although i did know a woman who wore this almost exclusively as her signature scent and it smelled brilliant on her i almost want this to be cut in half in terms of the intensity but the just straight up eau de parfum oud mineral is a beast of a fragrance it's so marine <laughs> like it's so reminiscent of the ocean incredibly salty a little seaweedy but not too much not like in the funky direction i don't know it's a brilliant fragrance deserves a lot of praise for its composition and how it comes across and its depth its character its uniqueness nothing else smells like this when i smell oud mineral i know that it is oud mineral obviously it has some oud in it too <laughs> so ocean mixed with oud mixed with saltiness and it's it's beautiful and overwhelming at the same time so not a safe blind buy by any means although this may be one that ends up on my long-term wish list like one of those fragrances that i hate to love and love to hate boom there's a video idea maybe i'll do that fragrances i hate to love and love to hate <laughs> Now we get to my top three fragrances of the month, and I'm going to start with a beauty, Bottega Veneta. So I do have a large backup bottle of this because I adore it so much. I get mostly just a really soft, like suede, almost buttery, almost buttery leather out of this. Can something be buttery and dry? Because that's how this feels to me. There's patchouli and oak moss and some other kinds of like woody notes in here, but it's mostly just this very, very soft, delicate leather. Like if I touched it, if this had a texture, it would be the most buttery leather and it smells suede. So imagine all of that kind of combined in your mind. Little hints of florals in the background. I think this is sophisticated and lovely and an elevating fragrance when I wear it. Winner. Then the next one up is Burberry Her EDT. 
Y'all, this is off of one full wear. I spray things here and there, right? But I'm talking about I wore this one full day and could not stop spraying myself. Here's a situation. I'm trying to buy smaller bottles because my collection is large. So I want to be able to use my fragrances and where possible buy smaller bottles. And I made a mistake here. <laughs> I'm going to probably need a huge bottle of this at some point. I, this reminds me so much of BDK's Passe Soir. They're like cousins. They're not identical, but there's just some really bright, beautiful, fruity notes at the top here, some floral notes. There's like a cleanliness to this. It's a really clean fragrance with depth, body, oomph, lots of personality, just bright and beautiful. Now, when I tried this in store at Ulta, when I sprayed in store, I knew that I liked it, but it seemed soft in the store, probably because I was sampling lots of other fragrances at the time. But having brought it home and put it on with a fresh nose, in the morning, I could not stop spraying myself. <laughs> just winner, winner, chicken dinner. And another clean kind of a fragrance is Pure Poison, also in my top three. I like wearing this all year round. To me, it's a bit of like a snow queen kind of a bottle. And I like to spritz this in the winter when I want something a little bit different and a departure from all of the heavy, ambery, leathery, woody, resinous kinds of fragrances that we tend to wear in the winter. Spicy fragrances, all of that. But in the summer, it shines differently. You know the expression, it hits different. It hits different in the summer. It has this beautiful, elegant to me soapiness and florals. So it's white florals plus a really soft, delicate soap. It's not like a heavy, astringent kind of a soap. It is luxury soap with luxury florals all blended together beautifully and muted out for a soft, sophisticated kind of a fragrance. Could you overspray this and be a little strong on this? Sure. But for the most part, a few sprays of this goes a long way and it's a winner. Everyone loves this when I wear it. Pure poison. Some people don't like this. They feel like it's maybe too mature, um, too much in the soapy direction, and they just don't care for it, but it does work for me. We're now into the middle three or meh category. Fragrances that are okay, but maybe I wasn't totally in love with. The first one is one that I really enjoyed last summer. And when I wore it this summer, I had a decent experience with it, but it didn't hold its own compared to the rest of the bunch in August. And since I have more fragrances like this, now than I did last summer. I'm not I'm not sure if this is one that I need to keep around anymore, but I do like it just to be clear, just not as much as others. And it's Salt by Ellis Brooklyn. Now I did pull up the review on this because I wanted to share some of the notes. I don't feel like the notes that are listed for this are what this actually smells like. So among the notes that are supposed to be in here are Tiara and Alang Alang. I think when you first spray this, you get like a passing whiff of that, but that goes away quickly. And this is listed as an amber floral, and I don't think it should be that. I think it's more in the direction of Oud Mineral, like a, a woody aquatic kind of a fragrance is what I get out of this. It's labeled salt, and it is a very, in my mind, salty fragrance. Not as salty as Oud Mineral, but definitely in the category of female fragrances, you got a lot of salt in here. What I get mostly out of this is a really soft musk and ambergris. At least this summer, the note that smells a little bit salty and like warm skin. It's a little bit sweet also and salty at the same time. That I do get out of this. There's a sandalwood in here. You can smell that somewhat. But so musk, saltiness, hints of sweetness, and sandalwood mostly. Lovely, it has decent projection and decent longevity on me. This bottle is just friggin' gorgeous. I, I could stare at this all day, beautiful color. I don't know that I need this compared to other fragrances in this category. Next in the middle three is Iris de Syracuse. I nearly bought a full bottle of this. I've never smelled it. I don't know that I've had a sample of it. I don't think I've smelled it, but I purchased a travel spray and I took it with me on vacation. And I think this smells absolutely lovely on the opening and then it just virtually disappears within 30 minutes and that's being generous. The first 10 minutes, I'm like, yeah, I totally need a full bottle of this beautiful, soft, slightly powdery iris fragrance. Iris is the dominant note and it's like a cold, cool iris that's very elegant, very structured, very sort of clean lines. So, <laughs> but it goes, it's like fleeting. Like I spray it, I walk around, I grab a cup of coffee and I'm like, where'd you go? What happened? 
are we no longer friends so i will not be purchasing a full bottle of this at least not right now i'm hoping that perhaps my travel spray was defunct in some way i just can't believe the longevity or lack thereof rather of this fragrance so this, then the other in this category is california reverie by Van Cleef and Arpels. A another fragrance that's very pleasant, but nothing outstanding for the price tag of this. It does have a nice yellow floral opening. I think it's Tiara that's in there or one of these other trop, is it Plumeria? Something like that, that's in the opening of this. So I do get a little bit of that happy, fun, sunny, yellow floral, very faintly. Another fragrance that just completely disappears on me. It does not last. I just cannot justify purchasing a full bottle of this. So. In the category of bottom three, <laughs> I had the nerve to take with me on vacation again the same travel spray from last time that I didn't like, thinking something would change and I would all of a sudden like it. Wrong. Lemon Island. I got no lemon. I got like a salty, stale skin with a little bit of waft of stale breath coming in the direction of the skin i got musk and i got like really old pale dry laundry detergent somewhere this is just such a disaster of a fragrance for me i'm angry at myself that i wasted a whole day of fragrance life trying to like this again <laughs> lemon island we're never going to be friends and then the next one that I heard a number of people rave about, and I thought I would like it based on their descriptions, is Gold Flowers from Montal. This is a 1.7 ounce. I'm glad I did not buy the full bottle. This thing is wretched. Rancid, wretched, ratchet. Oh my God, I cannot with this. <laughs> this smells like flowers with plastic, synthetic notes, just a hot mess of an air freshener fragrance. And this absolutely needs to leave my house. No. Finally, a fragrance that, look, I got respect for this fragrance, but I'm not sure that I can really wear this and enjoy it. I have its mama. <laughs> I'm talking about Shalimar from Guerlain, and this is the Eau de Cologne concentration. Look, I have the original Shalimar, the Eau de Parfum. I have Shalimar Souffle or Souffle Intense, Entense, and I like the Souffle Intense, however y'all say that, and I think I am growing to re-like the Shalimar Eau de Parfum. It's one that, you know, represents my childhood and a fragrance that was in my house then. And there are times that I wear that that I like it and times I wear it that I'm just not sure if it's for me and maybe I need to put it on my vintage shelf and just love it from afar. This fragrance here I purchased because... I thought it was a lighter version of the Shalimar, and it is, but there is still something happening in here that doesn't want to be my friend, okay? So I'd rather just stick with the original Eau de Parfum, which has a lot of body, a lot of oomph. I thought that I liked this when I first purchased it, and I wore it, and it was tolerable. And then this time around, I wore it, and there's something in here that smells almost like a peanut shell. <laughs> Not peanut butter, but like a peanut shell with a real simple ambery kind of a thing happening. I, I just can't figure out what I think about this. And I didn't enjoy it the last time that I wore it. So I think I'm going to be letting this one go because I don't see myself reaching for it. Next up is overhyped fragrance. And then I have three hidden gems to share with you. So stick around for that. In the overhyped fragrance, hold your tomatoes. I am predicting the judgment from this, okay? Look. Listen, hear me out. Ani by Nishane. Okay, do I like this fragrance? A lot. I really do like it a lot. But the amount of hype that this fragrance got when it became popular on YouTube, I don't think equals what this fragrance is. This is a very particular kind of fragrance. In fact, I'm kind of surprised by all the hype that it got because it is a really spicy, heavy vanilla, like a thick, heavy vanilla with spice in it. And it has like a little bit of a men's aftershave kick to it, okay? 
do I like this? Yeah, I even have two dupes of it. I don't need all of that, but I have them. One from Alexandria called Honey and one from Dua called Drowning in Vanilla. I actually like the Dua Drowning in Vanilla and the Honey a little bit more. They're a little smoother, a little bit more round than this fragrance, which can be a little harsh and a little overwhelming if you're not ready for it. That said, this fragrance has a cult following and I want to understand that, but I don't. Do I like it? Am I keeping it? Am I going to rock it this winter? You got it. I do think the hype around this was just extreme. Okay, so let's just leave it at that. Yes, but is it really that amazing? Maybe, I don't know. So then in the category of hidden gems, I won't go on and on about this one because it is in my office friendly fragrances that I posted a few weeks ago. It's Monsoon Rose Gold, which is just this beautiful, lovely fairly linear clean rose fragrance like a fresh clean maybe even freshly picked rose it's not a very mature rose fragrance it's clean and it's a white t-shirt kind of a fragrance in my opinion very easy to douse yourself in as you see from the dent in this and super inexpensive lovely 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 Next is one that I have talked about before, but deserves all the hype that I can give it. It's Deep Red from Hugo Boss. Affordable fragrance, and I have some of the notes pulled up because they really embody how this comes across. There's a pear note in here that's nice and juicy, accompanied by orange and ginger, a little hint of tuberose. There's vanilla, sandalwood, and musk in the base. So it's fruity and it's sweet and it's a little bit woody and it's a crowd pleaser. When I wear this, I get compliments on this every time. The bottle is like misleading. I wish it had a more elegant bottle to accompany the beautiful fragrance, but man, is this a winner. And then y'all, one of my all-time favorites that I wore so much, I went through so many bottles of it that I got sick of it and took a break from it, and now it's back <laughs> in my collection. It's Ginger Essence from Origins. I don't really hear anyone at all talking about this. Maybe no one likes this but, but me, but it is through and through a spicy ginger fragrance. It doesn't have depth to it, and that's a good thing. This is one of the fragrances that jumps off your skin. It's bright, it's sprightly, it's got a lot of personality, and it's just a fresh fragrance, you know? So great white t-shirt fragrance, great everyday fragrance, and then sometimes this has, not sometimes, it does have longevity issues. It's not one that lasts long, however, let me turn you on to Origins Ginger Souffle, which is the exact scent. These are meant to be paired together. There's also, I think, a salt or sugar scrub that Origins makes that has the same scent. But I put this on and then this on top, and it's just like a fresh, gingery dream. So I am back in love with this. It have been for the last maybe year and a half, two years. You know, I wore this over and over and over again. <laughs> somewhere between the 2010 and 2015 time period of my life when I was like obsessed with citruses. So hidden gem, absolutely. That is my August fragrance awards. Please stay tuned for all those fantastic videos that are coming up. I can't wait to share them with you. And I appreciate you being with me today. Have a great one and take care, my friends.